Hi, in this video I'm going to be working on this uh, Nintendo Switch that I picked up on eBay for around 50 euros. Um, the problem with it, it has no power, so when I show you here, when I plug it into the amp meter, I get a 0 0.093 amps, so it's not taking a charge. And I have opened the backup and tried to replace the battery, it's not the battery. And when I try to power it on, nothing happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up, have a look around the board, see if I can find anything, maybe around the M92 or the P13, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now I've got the board taken out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the microscope and see if we can find any problems with this board. Okay, so um, there is no water damage on this board because this indicator is a water indicator, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by checking this fuse here and there is continuity, so that fuse is good. Um, I'm presuming the port is okay because I did check it on both sides of the amp meter and uh, it was getting a reading on both sides. Um, now I'm going to check this M92 chip here. So we should only be getting a beep on one side of these caps. and. So good, 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 and this cap here is good. Um, this cap here I think is related to the APU, if that's shorted I think uh, most of the time it's going to be a no fix. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check around the uh, P13 at the back, that's another common failure on these switches. So what I'm going to do is switch it around the back and we're just going to test this cap here. And it's good. So um, they are the two most common failures on the switches, as far as I know. So um, next, I'm going to move down to the uh, BQ chip here. Okay, so here is the BQ chip, and straight away I noticed that there is corrosion here, along here. So this is most likely going to be the culprit for this issue. Um, I'll still give it a fast uh, check for shorts around the chip. And yeah, we have a short on this cap, but it's probably being caused by this chip because of the corrosion on it. So let me just check here. And yeah, we have a short here as well. So we have a short here, and we have a short here. And it's most likely caused by this chip because of the corrosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chip off, give it a clean, and check is these shorts gone and if they're gone I'll replace this chip and hopefully we'll have a working switch put in. Okay so before I remove the chip I'm going to uh, put some captain tape here to try and stop this little connector here from melting and for the removing the chip I'm uh, probably going to use around 400 degrees celsius and around 60% airflow. Um, I've never removed this chip before so I might have to adjust the temperature and the speed so it could be different if you if you are trying it. <clears throat> so uh, I put the captain tape on, remove the chip, and we'll check if those shorts have disappeared. And this captain tape will also help hold this board in place. Cause, because I don't have a board holder at the moment, so it might make it a bit easier. Okay, so right here, down where the corrosion was, it looks like we are missing a pad right here. Oh, 
Okay, so if you've seen that bit of corrosion there, I thought I scraped it away because I thought the pad was missing, but uh, the pad is actually still there, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check this cap here and over here just to see is that short cleared. And yeah, we've oil here, and let me just check here. We've got open line here as well, so yeah, so that short is gone, so it was being caused by that BQ chip. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up this area, add some uh, leaded solder and put a new BQ chip on and hopefully this switch will be working again. Okay so now that that's cleaned up and the shorts are gone I'm going to install my new uh, BQ chip. Um, pin 1 is on the bottom right there. To do this I'm going to use uh, 400 degrees again but I'm going to drop the airflow down a bit. Um, heat up the middle pad, drop the chip in and try and get it into place. Um, and hopefully then this switch will come back to life. Okay, so the BQ chip has gone on now, I've checked it, it looks to be in line. Um, there's no bridging on it, the solder does look pretty close together here, but it's not bridged. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check for a shot real quick, just to make sure. And yeah, the shorts are still gone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reassemble and hopefully the switch is working. Okay, so everything's back together enough to do the... Okay, so everything's back together enough to test. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the charger in and hopefully we get a charging logo here. Nothing. Oh, yes. There it is. So hopefully this one is fixed. What I'm going to do now so is, so is uh, leave it charged to see if it will take charge and just make sure everything is working, make sure there's no other problems with it. Okay, so this is just an update. It's been a few days and I have been using it. It all seems to work fine as far as I can test. Um, when I plug it in, it comes on, it's gone dead now again, but uh, it does take a charge, it holds the charge and it was already in the system when I opened it up first, but I have reset it now and I don't have any Joy-Cons, but touch is working, Wi-Fi was working. Uh, I have to uh, get Joy-Cons to make sure that the rails are working because I factory reset it now so I can't get back in without the Joy-Cons, but uh, it's fully working I think. Um, it's a bit scratched up, it needs a new shell and that's about it really. If there's any other problems with it, I will update in a future video. If you like it, thanks for watching and hopefully I see you in the next video.